A recent study shows that over 88 million project management related job roles will be created by 2027. So, where does that leave an aspiring project manager? With everlasting competition in the job market, one can always stay ahead with the best of knowledge. Hello everyone, this is Ryan from Invensys Learning, and we bring you a project management tutorial for all your project management related worries. Let's take a look at the agenda for this session. We will go through project management from scratch, and explore how history changed the meaning of project management. After this, we will learn about various project management methodologies and understand the project management life cycle. Moving further, we will explore various project management knowledge areas and project management tools. In the end, we will see a project management demo along with the various project management certifications one can go for in 2021. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also, subscribe to Invensys Learning to avoid missing out on informative and fun tutorials. Press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Invensys Learning. We will be posting a lot of informative and comprehensive tutorials on project management. Now, without any further delay, let's begin our session. Project management is the process of leading a team to fulfill the requirements of any project. The main aim is to fulfill all the requirements in a project within the given time. Think of a project like building a new bridge. Of course, there will be numerous requirements and time constraints. The team will have to buy certain equipment, there will be a requirement to create an effective project resource management. The budget estimation, risk analysis, change management plan, stakeholder management, etc. A certain amount of time will be given for the whole project to be completed. That will be the deadline to finish the project. So, managing all the processes and tasks for building the bridge is essentially how project management works for any other project as well. We will learn about various terminologies and the project management life cycle. But, before that let's dive into the history of project management, and understand what caused the need for project management. And how it has shaped over the years. Project management dates back as much as 2570 BC where the people were building the pyramids of Giza. There has been a lot of confusion about how the pharaohs achieved this feat without modern engineering. But, there must have been some sort of planning and execution done for it to stand so strong even in 2021. The records also suggest that there might have been managers for each of the four pyramids. So, great evidence for us to believe how project management saved the day for the pharaohs. The other exemplary feats are Hoover Dam, the Great Wall of China where there must have been a very rigorous planning phase that led to the execution of such marvelous gems of archaeological wonders. It is needless to say that the methodology they were following ended up being the most efficient for them. All these marvels speak for themselves and are pretty evident to the fact that project management indeed excelled during the ancient times as well. The Gantt charts used in the Hoover Dam project proved out to be one of the most used tools for project managers even today. The critical path method in 1957 by DuPont proved out to be the game changer in the project management history timeline. They were able to predict the duration of the project by using the critical path method. It basically lays out a sequence of tasks that will have the least amount of flexibility. DuPont primarily used the CPM or critical path method to make sure that the complex process of shutting down a chemical plant and then reopening it again does not affect the primary goal of the factory. And in fact, it did save the corporations a lot of money. History has it, as much as 1 million US dollars were saved in the first year of CPM implementation. Shortly after the CPM was implemented, the PERT was introduced in 1958. PERT or Program Evaluation Review Technique is how the project managers were able to identify the time duration for each task, involved in the project along with the minimum time that would take for its execution. The very first implementation was seen in the Cold War, where the US Navy used PERT for the Polaris Missile Project. Then in 1969, the PMI or Project Management Institute was formed to promote the project manager profession. And ever since, PMI has been a constant source of inspiration and project management knowledge with their PMBOK project management body of knowledge. They offer certifications as well, like CAPM Certified Associate in Project Management, and Project Management Professional PMP. During the year 1975, Prompt2 in the Mythical Man Month was introduced to the world of project management. Prompt2 was a response to a widespread problem with computer projects. They were running for more than the estimated time and used to cost the company lots and lots of money in terms of the estimated budget. So, Prompt2 was nothing but a set of guidelines that will be followed for the computer projects in order to create a perfect stage flow. The UK government CCT used the Prompt2 guidelines for all its information systems projects. On the other hand, 
Mythical Man Month was an essay from Fred Brooks' book on software engineering and project management. Brooks' law states that adding manpower to a late software project makes it later. This was something that he learned from his experiences managing projects at IBM. It doesn't matter how much experience or skills the person has, the extra communications, meetings, the collaboration will always delay the project. In 1986, Scrum methodology was introduced as a project management methodology. It emerged as a general project planning technique that was not just limited to software development and management. The PMBOK first edition published in 1987 was an attempt to standardize the best practices and processes in project management. First published as a white paper has now become one of the most essential tools in the project management profession. In 1989 Prompt 2 became Prints or Projects in Controlled Environments which was first adopted by the UK government for all the information systems projects. But due to a few limitations, the Prince method was revised in 1996, and then came the Prince 2 method. With a new revision applicable to all sorts of projects the projects weren't limited to information systems or information technology projects that reduced costs and reduced estimated time. The late 90s era has been a great success story for the project management profession. In the year 1997, CCPM was introduced, critical chain project management makes sure the resources are levelly loaded in the beginning and are flexible enough to take up or switch between more tasks during the project to keep it on schedule. The year 1998 saw the time where PMBOK was approved by a triple E and became a standard in project management. And in the year 2001, the Agile Manifesto was written. In February 2001, 13 software developers at a lodge in Utah, came up with something known as the Agile Manifesto today. It mainly contains the 12 Agile core principles which form the basis of any Agile software development project. Now that we have reached the 21st century mark in the history of project management, let us get a better perspective of project management with the project management life cycle. A project is a set of requirements that are supposed to be fulfilled within a specified time. It is as simple as that. But, every project goes through a project management process or a project management cycle that mainly consists of five stages. The stages are project initiation, project planning, project execution, project monitoring and control, and project closure. Every project will have to see the five stages effectively to be able to get to the successful project delivery. Let's take a look at them one by one. Project initiation is the very first stage in the project management life cycle. The main focus of the initiation phase is to get the feasibility of the project and understand, if possible, how the project will reach its conclusion. The initial analysis would include the cost and time that would be required for the project to reach conclusion. The necessity for the project and other relevant factors that lead to the project's success is decided in the first stage. The project kickoff with the stakeholders, various team members, form a project charter that contains the information about the budget, resources, processes, communication details, etc. Watch the video until the end to find out about more such important project management terminologies used in the day-to-day -day tasks as a project manager. After the initiation stage, the project moves to the planning stage where the project plan is made. Let's learn about the planning stage in detail. After the successful approval of the project from the initiation stage, the project moves towards the planning stage. The project mainly has to go through the project plan that will contain the details about the resources, costs, risks, and most importantly the project timeline. These will also serve as the guide for the execution and control phase of the project management life cycle. The project planning stage also constitutes the work breakdown structure, which is nothing but the process of breaking down the project into tasks and activities so that a schedule can be created and the work can be assigned to the resources accordingly. The project managers in the planning stage often take the help of the project management tools, to visualize and envision the project goals that will help them to schedule the project in the most efficient manner. After the project planning stage, the project moves to the execution stage. By now, there is a project plan and a timeline with each of the team members who have some or the other task assigned to them. This means that whatever task is being finished or is in progress, is basically in the execution phase of the project management life cycle. Most of the work is done in the execution phase of the project management life cycle. According to the plan, the teams are required to complete the tasks and produce value for the customers. In the execution stage, the project manager also takes care of any shortcomings, issues, etc. They reallocate the resources among the team to reduce any delay to the project delivery. After this, 
The next stage is the monitoring and control stage. The monitoring and control stage takes care of the quality of the deliverables. It consists of the various monitoring and control activities and processes to track the progress of the project. It starts with the execution stage and makes sure that the project stays well within the budget while being on time. The main focus of the monitoring and control stage is to make sure that the constraints in the project management triangle never go off track. The monitoring and control stage employs various processes to keep the cost, time, and scope of the project well intact before the project can move towards closure. This is the fifth and final stage of the project management life cycle. At this stage, the project manager hands the deliverables to the stakeholders and completes the project after the approval of the stakeholders. The resources are released, the project is documented and released. In this stage, the teams can go for retrospection where they will discuss whatever they have learned from the project, or what kind of skills they would want to implement to the upcoming projects, and so on. After this, the project is officially over, and the project managers can go for the next project in their kitty. And, now that we have a brief understanding of how the project management life cycle works, let's dig a little deeper and understand the various project management knowledge areas. The PMI or Project Management Institute is a standard for project management around the globe. The PMBOK, or Project Management Body of Knowledge is a PMI published a set of project management guidelines that are useful for effective project management. In its PMBOK, the PMI has summarized the 10 knowledge areas that resonate with the five phases of project management i.e. project initiation, project planning, project execution, project monitoring and control, and project closure. Let's learn about each of them in detail and understand how these knowledge areas can benefit us in becoming a successful project manager. Project integration management as the name suggests holds the project together. So, what exactly comes under the project integration? The most basic thing that happens in project integration management is creating a project charter which is like a document that is created in the project initiation process. And it contains basic information about the project feasibility goals, requirements, etc. The project management plan creates a project timeline that basically guides the project progress from start to finish. Project integration management includes collaboration from the various members and the stakeholders to see to it that the project is reaching its conclusion. Without hampering any of the three constraints in the project triangle i.e. cost, time, and scope of the project. The collaboration includes taking permissions or approvals from the required stakeholders to move forward with the project. So, in any case, project integration management focuses on maintaining the integrity of the project through effective project planning, collaboration, monitoring the progress of the project, etc. Next up, we have project scope management. To understand the project scope management, we will first have to learn about it. What exactly is the scope of a project? Tell us in the comments guys, what did you think the project scope is all about? And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to Invensys Learning. Now, coming back to the project scope. Project scope is the work related to the project. Effective scope management covers the concept of scope planning and scope of work which is nothing but a detailed checklist of all the tasks, processes included in the project. The work breakdown structure basically gives a graphical representation of all the work related to the project. The various points that are involved in the scope of work are Project requirements Project plan Assigned tasks Project goals Cost estimates End product Terms and conditions All these points make way for effective project scope management that can be a very effective measure to work closely with the stakeholders in order to get the results according to their requirements. Validating scope during the project leads to project completion without conflicts. Next up we have the product schedule management. Project schedule management is one of the most important knowledge areas in project management. It includes planning the schedule for each of the tasks and activities in the project. Effectively choosing the right resources so that the project schedule is up to the mark. And making sure that the team members have the most suitable tasks assigned to them so that the project delay is reduced to the minimum. The project schedule management takes into consideration the various dependencies that may be associated with any of the assigned or scheduled activities. The dependencies are prioritized according to the critical nature of the dependencies or how much damage they could cause to the project. Once the project schedule is made, the next step is to plan the schedule to increase the efficiency of the project. The techniques like EVM to measure the progress of the project can be a very effective tool to stay on top of dependencies in the project schedule. Next up, we have the most interesting knowledge area, project cost management. 
Project cost management is the effective way of deciding how much cost or budget would be required for the whole project. The cost estimation or cost management plan consists of establishing the cost budget for each and every activity in the project. It is essential to keep in check the expenditure on each and every project-related task and effective tools to make sure it does not go beyond the expected cost. The regulation or measuring the progress at each step along with the expenses makes way for effective project cost management and ensures keeping the estimated cost in line with the actual expenditure. Next up, we have project quality management. If the project quality is not up to the mark, all the effort that went into planning, executing, and regulating the cost for the project goes in vain. Because the deliverables would require rework and then end up taking twice the time on reviews and the whole project again. So, it is equally important to make sure the project quality management is up to the mark. The process of regulating the quality assurance in all of the project-related activities is how project quality management works. In the beginning or before starting a task or activities, there will be certain standards or guidelines set for quality assurance. And only after all the standards are met, then only the project will move forward. The quality assurance saves a lot of iterations and makes sure the requirements are being met, which were set up by the stakeholders for the projects. Next up we have project resource management. Resource management includes managing the human resources in the organization that will be responsible for fulfilling the project requirements. Human resources management includes mapping out a structure with each role and responsibilities required for the project. Once the project has the specific requirements, the resources are assigned tasks from various teams according to the project requirements and what kind of responsibilities they would have to work on. If the workforce is short on certain positions, the new hires compensate for the work that will be required for the project. Assigning tasks is one thing, the managing aspect of the project resources is the most important aspect for any organization. In any project, it is important to keep track of the work that is being done by any team member. Tracking their progress to make sure that the project plan is working efficiently and the project will be delivered on time. Next up, we have project communication management. Communication in any project environment is key for collaboration among various team members and stakeholders. Project communication management refers to the planning of communication strategy for the project. This includes the channel of communication along with how the team will manage communication in order to get the best results for their project. Sometimes the communication gap can lead to disasters for projects. So, effective communication management is all that a project needs to fulfill all the communication requirements. Some projects even require secure and private communication channels for sensitive information that needs to be communicated. Most of the government projects set up secure communication channels so that none of the sensitive information is ever compromised. And managing the communication between teams, restricting a few information points to only a few members, and other aspects such as security and monitoring are covered in the project communication management. Next up, we have project risk management. Project risk management is the process of prioritizing, identifying, and categorizing the risks that can be encountered during the execution of the project it is necessary to make note of the risks that are associated with the project based on qualitative and quantitative analysis. The qualitative analysis basically identifies the effect of the biggest of the risks on the project. And the quantitative analysis showcases the impact of risks on factors like budget, scheduling, project delivery, etc. One of the most important things in risk management is the consolidation of facts. Once a risk has been identified, the response has to be generated in order to deal with it and resume the project. So, consolidating the information on known threats basically readies the teams for the risks that may affect the projects in the future. Next up, we have Project Procurement Management. Project Procurement Management deals with the procurement of work outside the organization. Hiring a private contractor, freelancers for any job for the project is how the Project Procurement Management works. The teams have to carry out the analysis and figure out what kind of work would be required for the project. After the requirement is set, the teams will hire contractors, freelancers to get the job done. But, they need to make a note or document the terms of reference, statement of work, etc. in order to avoid any conflicts or shortcomings. Next up, we have the project stakeholders management. The project stakeholders are the concerned parties who have provided the requirements for their projects. The main focus is to create a project that will fulfill the requirements set up by the stakeholders. So, project stakeholders management gets the message across all teams so that the desired outcome is achieved at the end of the project. 
it is important to identify the stakeholders at the beginning of the project, and then the collaboration is maintained throughout the project so that each of their inputs is heard and worked upon. The stakeholder management plan will consist of each of the stakeholders along with their inputs regarding the project and the impact it will have on the project. The project managers often maintain a rich communication with the stakeholders so that all of their inputs are being addressed at each point of the project. These were a few knowledge areas in the PMI PMBOK that gives a basic idea or basic understanding of project management. Now that we are done with the project management knowledge areas, let us get a look at a few project management methodologies that project managers can choose for their projects. There are numerous project management methodologies to choose from. But the more important aspect is how would you choose the best or the most efficient project management methodology for your project. Before getting into the details, let's quickly go through what exactly is a methodology in project management terminology. And also take a look at a few basic features of the methodologies. A methodology in project management is nothing but a bunch of standards and guidelines that will yield the most efficient results for your project. Think of a project as a cricket match. Now a cricket match would follow certain rules and regulations so that the game can be played in the most efficient way without wasting any time. And for every format of cricket, the rules and regulations keep changing. When it comes to project management, the methodology will change with every project. No two projects can be the same. They will have different sets of goals. There might be multiple teams or resources, and the budget for the project may vary, but the projects are always unique. Since each project has its very own requirements and specific goals, we must choose the project management methodology carefully. Let's take a look at how we can approach the project management methodology for the most efficient results. Now, there can be several factors that decide which methodology you should actually go for. We have narrowed it down to a few that particularly plays a very crucial role in choosing the correct methodology. The size of your team is a very important factor in deciding which methodology you are going to for your project. The kind of communication that would be required from the members of your team, or if they are going to be dependent on each other or any other dependencies, plays a major role in deciding the correct methodology for your project. The budget allocated for the project also plays a very crucial role in deciding the methodology for the project. You have to be certain that no unprecedented expenses would be added to the budget by the time the project reaches its conclusion. You have to be certain about any changes that may occur in the duration of the project. Any unsolicited expenses can really hamper the overall performance of the project. So budget is another important factor for choosing the project management methodology. If there are any changes in the project after the initial phase begins, it may cause a lot of damage to the project delivery. So while choosing the project management methodology, we have to make sure that there is a scope of flexibility during the project or even if there is no scope for changes. We have to be aware of it beforehand and choose the methodology accordingly. A much more important aspect is when do you want your project to end? What kind of commitment is required from the team based on the deadline? It is crucial in order to decide which methodology will ensure the project delivery in the specified time. So the project timeline is one more factor that adds a lot of relevance to whichever project management methodology is chosen for the project. Another aspect is the kind of collaboration that is required between the various stakeholders. We will learn about the stakeholders in the later section where we will discuss all the important project management terminologies. Coming back to the topic, according to the project, each project will have its requirements where they need specific stakeholder collaboration. And sometimes it is not required at all. And it also adds a relevant bias towards choosing the correct methodology for your project. The risk associated with the project is also one of the driving forces while deciding the methodology for the project. The methodology will have to be efficient enough to manage the risk associated with the project without hampering the overall efficiency of the project. And then comes to the resources associated with the project. It is crucial to make sure that the resources that are linked to the project are available during the project, and how they would be managed for the overall efficiency of the project. One more factor is the scalability of the project. The methodology chosen for the project should align with the scalability of the project and provide the maximum efficiency for it. In various situations, the resistance to change can be really exhausting. So while choosing the methodology for the project, one must make sure they will be able to manage any resistance to change during the project and maintain full efficiency throughout the project duration. After making sure that these factors check out for any given methodology, you can go for the one having the most number of these factors satisfied along with the fact that they align with the project goal. 
so there can be a number of project management methodologies that you will find. Although each project has its own requirements, we have listed down a few methodologies that can get you started with project management. One of the oldest project management methodologies is the waterfall methodology. The control flow moves in a linear manner where each task has been finished before the next task can even begin. The various stages in the waterfall methodology include the following. Requirement stage. Analysis stage. Design stage. Execution stage. Testing stage. Deployment stage. And maintenance stage. So, to understand the waterfall methodology let's take a look at an example. Where we will use the waterfall methodology for the project planning. Let's consider a military project that involves missiles and weapons. So, with each stage, it is evident that one of the requirements would be the safety of humans around the weapons. So, keeping that as a requirement. The waterfall model will not move forward with the rest of the plan until or unless the basic requirements are met. Only after one stage is completed. The project will move towards other design, implementation, and deployment stages. Even when choosing a waterfall methodology. We have to keep certain factors in mind. The first one is. What is the goal of the project? If the project has specific predefined objectives, that will not change during the project duration. Then it is a good idea to go for waterfall methodology. Then. If collaboration from stakeholders is not required during the project. Then the waterfall model can be a really good choice. And. If the cost or the budget allocated for the project will remain constant. Then waterfall methodology can efficiently deliver the project to its success. All in all. The summary is that even the slightest changes in the processes, tasks, or deadlines in any of the stages can cause great damage to the efficiency of the project. If your project has even a 1% chance of change in any of the requirements or goals, or if you don't already have all the necessary requirements at hand, then the waterfall methodology might not be a very good choice for your project. Next up, we have the Agile methodology. The Agile methodology came into existence with the constant backlash that the waterfall methodology was facing. The waterfall methodology was slower and the teams had to wait for one task to be finished in order to start with the next process or task. The Agile methodology also gave rise to other methodologies like Scrum, Kanban, etc. Which we will discuss in a while. The Agile methodology is nothing but a continuous process in which collaboration plays a key role. The iterative process can now shift focus on the other tasks while the previous task is in progress. They can continuously work on all the tasks and processes while constantly improving. Collaboration with various stakeholders during the project makes sure that the integrity and efficiency of the project are intact, and the iterative process takes care of the timely delivery of the project. Let's try to understand this with a simple example. Suppose that a project requires a team of 10 people to build a software. Now the team will begin their work by dividing it into stages if they are following a conventional setting. They will get the requirements. Analyze and plan the software requirements. Execute the plan to build the software. Test the software. Deploy the software, etc. Now the problem in the conventional setting is that the software will have to wait for each stage to be finished before they can start working on the next stage. But, with Agile methodology, they will further divide the stages into smaller modules and start working on them simultaneously. The continuous iterative process will save a lot of time for the teams and also account for any changes in the requirements encountered in the duration of the project. The collaboration with the stakeholders will take care of any sudden changes in the project goals while handling all the stages at once. Whenever we are choosing the Agile methodology, we have to make sure that there are a few pointers we have checked like the project goals can change at any time in the project. Collaboration is required for various stakeholders. The requirement for the project is not clear at the initiation stage of the project, meaning there will be more requirements coming along the way. If the budget allocated for the project does not support any change in the project goals, then the Agile methodology may not be a better option for your project. Strict deadlines also account for a lack of flexibility which will eventually delay the project in an Agile setting. So, it's better to check these factors before moving on to Agile methodology for your project. Next up, we have Scrum methodology for project management. Scrum is more of a framework than a methodology. In this Agile framework, the total work is divided into smaller cycles known as sprints. Sprints are nothing but the time taken by a specific team to complete the assigned task. The end goal can be achieved during a usual sprint that lasts about two weeks. 
or the project managers can go for sprints that last for a week or a month as well depending on the requirements or availability of resources. The Scrum framework follows the principle of continuous improvement where there are a few components like Scrum cycle, sprint backlog, etc. The sprint cycle consists of Scrum ceremonies such as sprint planning, daily Scrum, sprint review, and sprint retrospective where the work is divided into smaller cycles and each sprint is managed by scrum masters who take care of their respective sprints. Sprint planning is basically when the whole team sits down at a meeting and decides the work that needs to be done for each sprint. After the planning, the next ceremony is a daily scrum meeting, which is basically how each and every update is given regarding the sprint, so that a continuous improvement environment is always present. The goal of the daily scrum is to get updates as to what kind of work was accomplished the day before and what sort of work is intended to be done on the current day. Moreover, the scrum meeting also identifies any obstacles that may hinder the progress of the sprint. The sprint review, on the other hand, is the review of the final project or the final task finished during the sprint. Since, the scrum framework follows a continuous improvement process. The review is the stage where they inspect any shortcomings from the project. And sprint retrospective is when the team comes together to discuss the positive and negative outputs of their actions during the sprints. They do so to identify the things that can benefit the upcoming projects as well. Next up, let's take a look at the Kanban methodology. Kanban is another project management methodology that runs on the Agile principle. With a constant goal for continuous improvement, the Kanban methodology focuses on transparency and visual representation of the progress of the project. Kanban methodology follows the principle of pulling the work from the predefined backlog on a continuous basis. The work is then arranged on a Kanban board, in different stages where everyone can see the progress of the project or a particular task. One of the advantages being a visual representation of the progress of each task. The other significant advantage of using the Kanban methodology in project management is that it will give an exact representation of any shortcomings as well. The VIP limits or work-in-progress limits ensure the prevention of any potential bottlenecks, where one can put a limit on a stage. Let's try to understand this with an example. In a conventional setting, an employee keeps getting two tasks a day and always ends up with more work-in-progress at the end of the week. No matter how hard the employee works, the work keeps piling up. Now the Kanban methodology takes care of this with a work-in-progress limit, where after a certain point, that employee won't be able to move any more work in the next stage unless he or she finishes other tasks. This methodology usually works the best for the projects where the visibility of the progress is important and the work can be usually divided into specific stages. Although, Kanban would not work for projects where the complexity of the project is high. By now, a lot of you must be thinking why not combine the Scrum and Kanban, if both of them work perfectly fine for visibility and continuous improvement. To answer this question, Next up, we have Scrum Van methodology. Scrum is a hybrid agile project management approach that follows a bit of both Scrum and Kanban's principles. The Scrum Van uses the pull method from the Kanban methodology for getting the task from the backlog based on the capacity. So, here in a traditional setting, the team would have sat down in a meeting and decided on which sprint to start working on. And the Scrum Van method also employs the VIP limits concept from the Kanban methodology where the project flow remains constant without creating any bottlenecks in sprints. The constant sprint planning, review, and retrospective take care of continuous improvement. And visibility of progress across each stage is taken care of by the Kanban methodology. So, all in all, Scrumban methodology is the combination of both Kanban and Scrum methodology and uses the best of each of them. If your project requires continuous improvement and full visibility of the progress of work in all the stages, the Scrum and methodology is the best choice for your project. Unless you don't want to experience both worlds at the same time. Then, the Scrum and may not be the methodology for your project. Next up, we have the Prince2 methodology. Prince2 or Projects in Controlled Environments is a project management methodology that is guided by seven principles. It best equips the project managers with best practices and skills to handle the projects in a Prince2 environment. The seven principles of Prince2 include, Continued business justification. Learn from experience. Define roles and responsibilities. Manage by stages. Manage by exception. Focus on products. And last but not least, tailor to the environment. The Prince2 certification is also a certification program that requires no major prerequisites. That makes it easier and accessible for aspiring professionals to best equip themselves with project management skills and processes. 
The PRINCE2 methodology will be perfect for teams that follow PRINCE2 as the standard project management qualification. And the methodology may not be the best choice for your projects. If the project does not conform to the seven principles of the PRINCE2 methodology. Next up, we have PMI, PMBOK. The Project Management Institute publishes the project management body of knowledge every once in a while that serves as a project management standard across the world. It contains the basic project management principles and best practices that can lead a project to its glory with more efficiency. Since, PMP certification, which is one of the most sought-out project management certifications is based on the PMI PMBOK. It is safe to say that it is one of the most used methodologies for project management. Even though it is a set of principles and best practices, and it would not be appropriate to categorize it as a methodology, but an ecosystem of more than 1 million PMP certified professionals is enough to make it a standard across the world. The PMI, PMBOK can be a suitable methodology for your projects if you are seeking a PMP certification or already have one. It will also serve you best if you are working in an organization where PMP certification is a standard qualification. Otherwise, if you are seeking a specific or more decisive project management methodology, then PMI, PMBOK may not be the right choice for your project. Next up, we have the CPM or critical path methodology in project management. In every project, there have to be certain tasks that may require more attention than the other ones due to dependencies. The critical path method is a project management methodology, in which we are able to identify all the critical tasks, so that they can be scheduled in the most efficient way possible. It is done so that the project duration is not affected at any cost. It basically requires the team to identify all the tasks in the first place. Then, you are required to calculate how much time each task would take. Also keeping in check the dependencies of one task to another. After this, you will calculate the time that can be divided among the tasks and prioritize the most critical task to minimize the project delivery time. All in all, the main focus of this methodology is to calculate the critical path, in which the project will be executed so that the minimum time is taken to complete it. The projects with a lot of dependencies and complexity can go for this project management methodology. Although, if you are unsure about deadlines and time durations, the critical path methodology may not be the right choice for your project. Next up, we have Critical Chain Project Management or CCPM. The unrealistic approach with the critical path method is that it does not consider the delay that may happen for the task to be completed for numerous reasons. With Critical Chain Project Management, it offers that relaxation that critical path management lacks. It considers the buffer time for the critical tasks without hindering the whole process. This buffer gives way for corrective actions that may have been caused due to any issues or delays. You can go for the critical chain project management methodology if your project can follow the approach that the critical path method offers. But you also want to keep some buffer to correct any shortcomings on the way. Although, CCPM may not be the correct choice for your project if you do not require a buffer in the critical path method. Next up, we have a lean methodology. Lean is a project management methodology that follows the lean principles to maximize the value and minimize production waste. Based on the Toyota production system, the Lean methodology is now used to reduce the wasteful practices from other project management practices as well. The 3M principle includes Muda, Mura, and Murray. Muda refers to wastefulness that does not add any value to the customer. Mura refers to the overproduction that leads to wastefulness and uneven resource utilization. And Murray on the other hand refers to overburdening the resources. All in all, The lean methodology follows the lean principles that reduce the three M's to the minimum while maintaining the exact value for the customer that is required. You can go for the lean methodology if you have a project that may go towards wastefulness of resources, or you want to cut down on any extra resources in your project. Although, the lean methodology may not be suitable for your project. If you do not have any problem with the production waste or might not have enough funds to implement the lean methodology. Although lean methodology does work on reducing the costs, it is equally expensive to implement for any project. Next up, we have extreme programming. Extreme programming is an agile project management methodology designed for software development. The teams follow certain rules based on the five principles that emphasize teamwork for self-organizing teams and collaboration among team members and stakeholders. The five principles of extreme programming include simplicity, communication, feedback, respect, and courage. 
The teams can go for the extreme programming methodology for your project. If you are looking for collaboration and teamwork, unless there are elements in your team that may not follow the rules, and the team cannot collaborate effectively, then the extreme programming methodology may not be the best choice for the project. Next up, we have outcome mapping methodology and project management. Outcome mapping is a progress measurement methodology. Unlike other project management methodologies, this process was designed by the IDRC or International Developmental Research Center where even the progress is focused on behavioral changes rather than measurable deliverables. It is more of a progress mapping tool where the lengthy design focuses on keeping records to measure the behavioral outcomes of the project. To understand this, let's take a look at an example. A charitable organization with outcome mapping as the project management methodology will focus on keeping track of the progress to understand how the project has brought the behavioral change or the long-term impact on the people. Outcome mapping may not be a good choice for your organization if you have deliverables that need to be measured for progress. If the project is associated with charities or focuses on long-term impact rather than measurable deliverables, then the outcome mapping methodology is the best choice for your project. Now that we have discussed a few project management methodologies, we will move towards project management tools. By now, I think you must have understood a lot about project management. With the project management tools, the manager's job becomes easier and hassle-free. So we will look at how the tools benefit project management and some of their features. A project manager handles teams and coordinates with them the requirements to achieve certain goals. The whole process requires a systematic approach to reduce any shortcomings. And project management tools can make a project manager's job easier in so many different ways. Let's try to understand how the project management tools can help your project with a few benefits. The project management tools that provide full visibility and project planning assistance can be very useful for the project managers. The already ready template designs, visual boards, and less complexity while planning the project gives an edge to project managers and eventually leads to better and effective project plans. Communication channels in the project management tools can be very useful for collaboration across teams. The communication barrier that may hinder the project's performance is reduced to none. With their all-inclusive communication channels, the stakeholders are able to convey their project needs with the teams efficiently with the project management tools. Constant progress analysis can also help in identifying risks and producing solutions to handle the risks as well. The project management tools have the risk assessment functionalities that can reduce the damage caused by the risks to a very minimum. They are able to identify any vulnerabilities based on the information provided in the project plan. With improved collaboration, project planning, and effective risk management. The projects are bound to reach improved productivity. When we eliminate the roadblocks from the collaboration, planning, and other factors, it obviously creates a lot of improvements in the project delivery. There are tools for project management that offer assistance in measuring the progress of work for remote teams. The boards that contain the work-related tasks and give a full view of the progress of the project gives a wider perspective on how the team is performing. And thus, the teams are able to identify any shortcomings even working remotely. The timelines and the various tools like Scrum Board and Kanban Boards give a full visual representation of the progress of the project. With these tools, you can easily identify which task requires more attention and how it will be completed without making any major changes in the original project timeline. The various communication channels from a project management tool also open a safe and secure way to share the files and documents related to the project. With the tools, you can easily manage your project files and store them in a secure location as well. The project management tools offer features that will curb the cost management issues for any project. They will identify the overexpenditure points so that you can easily mend a few processes to cover the costs of shortcomings. Resource allocation becomes a very easy task for any project manager. With the project management tools, they are able to assign any work to the most relevant resource since everyone is connected to the same network or tools. The project management tools do not necessarily require the project to bend their way. The project management tools are flexible and offer multiple features. Although some of the features may be common for some tools, every tool offers specific features for different projects. Let's take a look at a few features that a project management tool offers. While every project is unique and requires different features, we can narrow down a few generic features that are a must for every project management tool. Project planning. Project scheduling, collaboration, risk management, time tracking, budget tracking, 
So the features listed above are some of the generic features that are provided by the project management tools. There are a number of project management tools that are present in the market. Depending on how well the project management tool caters to your project requirements. You can choose your tools. I have listed down a few project management tools that you can go for in 2021. The first one is Proofub. Proofub is a conglomerate of all the essential tools that will be required for the team's functioning. It provides easy-to-learn tools under one roof with no peruser fee and simple fixed plans. The features have more to do with what a project manager wouldn't have to do with Proofub, that they are conventionally expected to do. Some of the features that are offered by Proofub are as follows. Discussions and tables to eliminate long email threads and to keep all the vital information handy. Kanban boards and Gantt charts for resource allocation and effective project planning. Keeping all the project files and documents at one place. The other features include in-built chat, proofing, timesheets, etc. Next up we have Trello. Trello is a collaboration tool that will take care of even the minutest detail of your project. Trello is like a board with an immense amount of sticky notes with details of each task and responsible persons in it. The only difference is that it is organized and you will know at exactly what time, who is working on what, and the progress of each individual task. The various features of Trello include Working with multiple teams All the information in one place Workflow automation, etc. Next up, we have Reich. Versatile and robust project management software, Reich is effective for improving performance and accelerated growth. Reich provides a great collaboration means and 360-degree visibility across all the departments. Some of the notable features include Work intelligence Kanban boards, interactive Gantt charts, purpose-built templates Custom request forms Project portfolio management, time tracking, advanced analytics, etc. Next up we have Jira. Jira Software is the project management tool for Agile teams. Originally designed for bug and issue tracking, Jira is used as a work management tool for various applications including Agile software development. The various features that Jira Software offers are as follows. Scrum boards. Kanban boards. Roadmaps. Agile reporting, etc. Next up, we have WorkZone. WorkZone is a project management tool that effectively works towards the enhanced collaboration of a team improving the project delivery and at the same time measuring the team's performance as well. The various features that the work zone offers include every information at a glance, collaborate securely in the cloud, measure and improve results, to-do lists and auto-reminder emails. Next up we have Asana. Asana is a project management tool that focuses on the collaboration of teams with the clarity of projects that they are managing and how they are executing the processes. The collective effort helps in enhanced project delivery. Some of the features of Asana includes Assign and organize tasks using list view. Manage timelines using a timeline. Focus on tasks using boards. Automation, integration, and workflow management. We will also be giving a demo on project planning using Asana in a while. Next up we have Basecamp. Basecamp is an all-in-one toolkit for working remotely. This project management tool focuses on giving all the information in one place instead of all over the place. With everything in one place, enhanced communication, and collaboration it will become easier to manage projects. Some of the features include Message boards To-do lists and group chats Schedule Automatic check-ins documents and files Next up we have Bitrix24 Bitrix24 is a united workspace that handles the many aspects of daily tasks. CRM, Project Management and Collaboration Platform. Some of the features include Communication Channels for Collaboration Inbuilt CRM Ease of Assigning Tasks and Planning Projects Contact Center and Websites Assistance, etc. Next up we have Slack. Slack is more of a communication platform that helps you manage the teams by collaborating with them effectively. With the various features, Slack is a brilliant tool to tidy up and organize at the workplace. Some of the features include Communication channels Apps and integrations Workflow builder and file sharing Enterprise key management, etc. Next up we have Gantt Pro. Gantt Pro is a project management tool that provides online solutions based on Gantt charts. It helps in managing the team effectively with planning and improved collaboration. Some of the features include Plan views Task management Team and resource management Budget tracking, reports, etc. Now that we have discussed a few project management tools, 
Let us also talk about a few project management certifications that you can go for in 2021. Project management ensures a timely success of all the project-related goals. With more and more organizations moving towards efficient project management practices, the job market is more promising than ever. A recent survey conducted by PMI commissioned AEG to do a talent gap analysis and found out a significantly bright future for project management-related job roles. There is an expected 33% growth in project management-related roles in the global market. This will create at least 88 million new project management-related job roles by 2027. Let's take a look at the top 5 project management certifications in 2021. Project Management Professional or PMP is an advanced level project management credential that is awarded by the Project Management Institute. A globally recognized project management credential ensures profound knowledge in the project management domain. The certification not only offers an understanding of the best project management practices skills and tools it also provides a kickstart to your career financially. With at least a 25% increase in APMP certified professional than an uncertified project manager. The certification gives a clear understanding of critical decision-making for the success of projects using project management skills and best practices. A PMP certified professional make an average of 110k USD a year. Since PMP is an advanced level certification, the candidate must fulfill a few eligibility requirements that include both professional and educational requirements. You must have a four-year degree, with an experience of 36 months leading projects with 35 hours of project management education or CAPM certification. The other alternative is when you have a high school diploma with 60 months of experience leading projects with 35 hours of project management education or CAPM certification. The exam format contains 200 multiple choice questions and a 4-hour time limit. The closed book type exam format is evaluated through psychometric analysis. Let's take a look at the next certification on our list. PRINCE2 is a project management certification offered by Axelos. The globally recognized certification ensures a profound knowledge in PRINCE2 methodology, principles, and best practices. The certification offers two levels, foundation, and practitioner that offers a clear understanding of PRINCE2 methodology for managing end-to-end projects efficiently. The average salary for a PRINCE2 certified project manager is around 90k USD annually. And since, the certification is offered in two levels foundation and practitioner, there are no eligibility requirements for the PRINCE2 Foundation. But the PRINCE2 Practitioner Certification requires the candidate to get the PRINCE2 Foundation Certification before they can appear for the PRINCE2 Practitioner Certification Exam. Exam format contains 75 questions in the PRINCE2 Foundation Exam out of which 5 are not scored. The candidate is required to score at least 50% or 35 marks out of 70 in the closed book exam setting. Unlike PRINCE2 Foundation, the practitioner exam format has 8 questions and each question has 10 question items further. The candidate must score at least 44 marks out of the 80 marks to get PRINCE2 practitioner certification. Next up we have CAPM certification. CAPM or Certified Associate in Project Management is an entry-level certification credential in project management that is offered by PMI. A CAPM Certified Professional has a profound knowledge of project management fundamental skills, best practices for handling a project. CAPM certification can be a good stepping stone for individuals who are seeking a promising career in project management. With an average salary of 92k USD annually, CAPM certification is a great financial boost to a candidate's career. The certification requires the candidates to fulfill an eligibility criterion that needs an associate degree and 23 hours of project management education and the exam format contains 150 multiple-choice questions in a closed-book setting. The candidate must attempt the questions within the three hours' time upon which the evaluation is done by psychometric analysis. Next up we have CSM. Certified Scrum Master is a professional certification credential offered by the Scrum Alliance that ensures a deeper understanding of the Scrum framework and agile project management skills and practices. Apart from global recognition, A certified Scrum Master has the ability to lead and manage teams to fulfill specific goals in a dedicated time. The average salary for a certified Scrum Master ranges somewhere around $97,000. Eligibility requires you to attend a two-day classroom training taught by a certified Scrum Trainer, CST, or receive private coaching from a certified Agile Coach, CAC. Have 14 hours of live online or 16 hours of in-person training with your CST, or 25 hours of face-to-face interaction with your CAC. 
After completing the course, you will need to accept the license agreement to take the CSM test that's available in 13 languages. The exam format contains 50 multiple choice questions out of which a candidate must answer 75% of the questions correctly in 60 minutes time. Last but not least we have Agile PM certification. Dot. Agile PM certification from APMG are the most popular credentials in the field of Agile project management. There are two levels of certifications, Agile Prime Minister Foundation and Agile Prime Minister Practitioner. Agile PM ensures a deep understanding of how to seamlessly blend Agile practices with control and governance of project management. And will set you on the path of becoming a successful Agile project manager. You will get a practical understanding of the underlying philosophy and principles of Agile PM and how to apply them in any industry. You will understand the background of Agile in project management. Agile PM ensures profound knowledge to understand and assign roles and responsibilities and appropriately configure the life cycle of an Agile project to a given project scenario. The average salary for an Agile PM certified professional is $108,000. Fortunately, there are no eligibility requirements for the Agile PM Foundation certification from APMG. But the candidate must clear the Foundation certification before appearing for the Agile PM Practitioner certification. To get the Agile PM Foundation certification, the candidates are required to answer 25 correct questions out of 50 multiple choice questions in a closed book setting. For the Agile PM Practitioner, the number of questions is 4 that represents 80 points. The candidate must score 50% points to get the certification in 150 minutes of time. Now that we have discussed the project management certifications that are most popular in the year 2021, let us also discuss a small demo using a project management tool called Asana. The objective of this demo is to create a project plan using the Asana project management tool. We will consider all the basic things we need to create a project plan. Whenever we are making a project plan, we will have to move systematically and follow a plan of action. Let's take a look at various things we need to consider before making a project plan. To create a project plan for any given project we have to do the following. Create a project charter. As we have discussed before. The project charter is the statement of scope, objectives, and resources. After that, we will create a statement of work. And figure out a work breakdown structure. Move along with risk analysis. Do some resource management for the project. Establish proper stakeholder management for the project. Create a change management plan to tackle any shortcomings. Make a schedule management plan, etc. The point of telling these factors is to establish that these will be the tasks that will be involved in the project plan that we will create in Asana. So, now let us go to the Asana home and create the project plan for our dummy project. After you have signed up on Asana, you will reach the home screen like this. And after that, you can hover to the top right corner of the screen to add the first project in Asana. You will see various options, but click on the project option and it will open the project window for you. Now, comes the fun part. This is where you can choose from the predefined templates or simply create a project from scratch. We have three options here, you can choose a scratch project, or choose any of the templates. The third option is to import a spreadsheet. Let's check out some of the templates we have in Asana. There are plenty of predefined templates that we can go for. And that is the beauty of using the project management tools. There are templates for marketing project plans, campaign management plans, stand-up meetings, and event promotions, etc. Since we are making a dummy project, we will start our project from scratch. Now, you can simply give the details about your project like the name. You can choose any name for for your project. You can choose the concern team. You can even choose the privacy for the project. If you want to restrict the access or make it public. And other options like if you want to choose the list view, the timeline, the board view, or simply go for the calendar view. It doesn't matter which option you choose because, in the end, you can choose between the views after you have created the project as well. I have already created a dummy project for the demo. Let's see how we created the tasks over there. Now in any of the views that we have here, we will create the tasks that we need for creating the project plan. Note that since I already made the dummy tasks, I made sure all the factors are fulfilled. Like the project charter, the risk management, change management tasks, etc. After creating the tasks we can create the subtasks in each of the tasks. I have added a few subtasks here and there to give it a real project structure. We can assign the task to a team member, and at the same time create subsections to monitor the progress of the tasks. And one more thing, create a deadline for the tasks as well. We can create subsections in the project as we have created here. 
it shows the fields as in progress, in review, and completed. With this, we can easily move the work from one section to another. You can make use of various custom fields that are present in the task section. And, when the task is completed, you can close the task and measure the efficiency in the dashboard for future challenges and improvements. This is how easily you can also create a project plan for your project using the project management tool Asana. This is only one of the tools that you can use for your project. There are 100s of project management tools that you can use for your projects according to your project requirements. Now that we are done with the project management demo, we have reached the end of the project management tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to Invensys Learning and press the bell icon to get the latest updates from Invensys Learning. Also, tell us in the comments about your journey towards project management, and if you need any assistance, we will be happy to get back to you. See you guys in the next session. Thank you.